Oh, hello, I didn't see you there. Don't mind me, I'm just playing some joust. Oh, you didn't expect me to be doing this right at the beginning of the video? Well, uh, this is really the end of the video. Well, and I just died there. Uh, <laughs> uh, last time on uh, part seven, I think it was, of the Joust Restoration, you know, we got the boards put together and we, we powered it up and we had a ROM error. Uh, so in this episode, you're gonna see me um, sort that out. Uh, we're gonna get the control panel obviously all wired up. I've got the coin door wired up. I've got a speaker plugged in. And uh, apparently we've got a working Joust with these really cool rare optical joysticks. Wow, it's getting really fast. Um, geez, and now I'm gonna die. Um, but uh, yeah, so this is, this is part eight of the Joust Restoration. And uh, here at the end of the episode that you're watching at the beginning, we've got a working Joust game. The controls are working, sound's working, coin door's working, monitor's working, the picture looks great. Uh, but it was a bit of a journey to get here. Uh, lots of weird twists and turns, a lot of things that I didn't expect. Uh, I did a bunch of work that I didn't expect to be doing, but uh, it all worked out well at the end. So if you wanna see how we got there, uh, <laughs> stay tuned and let's go. Overtime. In order to wire up the control panel, we're actually going to have to modify the reproduction wiring harness a little bit. Uh, so this repro harness that I got, again, from Ken Falta at Golden Age Arcade Parts, as expected, is designed for a typical uh, joust control panel uh, with the two-way leaf switch uh, joystick. So in, in a typical joust control panel, everything's done with leaf switches. So you have the, the player one and player two start buttons, you have the flat buttons for player one and player two, and the joysticks themselves for left and right movement uh, use leaf switches. But obviously things are a little different with my joust and we've got these you know, great, uh, really rare uh, optical joysticks, uh, which work a bit differently. Rather than having you know, leaf switches that you actuate to go left and right, there are these optical sensors that you're sort of breaking the, the, the light beam to indicate you know, if you're moving left or right. And the connector's a bit different, right? So rather than, you know, the, the leaf switches, which just have sort of, you know, a ground and a signal side that, that you squeeze together to, you know, produce the signal, we've got this, you know, kind of Molex connector here on the side, if you can see that. So uh, we're gonna have to, you know, modify this wiring harness. Uh, we've got sort of just tinned uh, uh, exposed wire here for the left and right and flat button. Uh, and for the left and right, we're going to have to fit that into you know, um, a pinout that looks like this. This is something that Brad Radell provided me. Um, this is really designed for a, a bubbles, which was a four-way optical. So we're gonna have basically the same thing for Joust, which is just a two-way. So we won't have an up or a down, but we'll have right, five volts, left, and ground. And that five volts is also something that I'm gonna have to change, right? So with leaf switches, uh, you know, you don't have to provide anything other than the, the signal. Uh, to it, but with these uh, opto, uh, optical uh, joysticks, you've got to provide the five volts to produce that beam of light, um, and uh, which means we have to run an additional wire uh, through this uh, uh, connector on the, the control panel harness to both of the joysticks. If we go over here, if we look at the other side of the connector on the main wiring harness, see this gray wire right here? This is providing the five volts, um, but on the other side, it's not uh, populated, right? So we're gonna have to add uh, that gray wire there. And so I found some uh, 18 gauge stranded gray wire, which was not easy to find, let me tell you. So I kind of, uh, uh, you know, kudos to Charles Klein for you know going the extra mile to make sure all the, the wire colors on his wiring harnesses are exactly the same as the original. So we'll add this gray wire here to, to match up with the, uh, the main harness, and we'll run it here to both the player two and player one uh, optical joysticks. So everything is fine for the, uh, the buttons, the player one and player two start, the flap, uh, and we've even got the, the lights here because these are meant to be, you know, the, the, the start buttons are meant to be lit um, uh, with their translucent red buttons. Um, so those will be fine, um, but with the, 
with the joysticks, right? So uh, we've got left and right, which is great. And each of these comes with a ground wire, which we're not going to need. We're only gonna need one ground wire overall for each joystick. Um, the other issue that I have is, I hope I can make this sort of turn here uh, to get the, uh, the wires into the connector and, and not sort of get, um, you know, pinch when I open and close the control panel. And I also need to move the wires for the flat button over to this side uh, for the button over here. So, um, yeah, so I'm gonna sort of hack up this, uh, or modify, I should say, this uh, repro harness a little bit uh, to give me a little bit of slack to get the, you know, the, the, the joystick wires over here, add the gray wire, uh, put it into that Molex connector, move the wires for the flat button over here to go onto the, um, uh, the leaf switch for that. We'll do that to both sides. Uh, like I said, we'll have to run that gray wire to bring five volts to both joysticks. Uh, and we'll be sort of doing this on both sides. I think I have all the parts that I need. Obviously my wire strippers and crimper. I've got uh, female Molex pins to go into the male uh, connectors down here. I've got the housing, uh, the two housings for the Molex connectors. I've got some um, leaf switches that actually I got from Arcade Shop that came with the uh, the kit for the um, the mechanical leaf switch joysticks that I won't use. So I'm sort of stealing these joysticks out of that uh, to use, or these uh, leaf switches out of that to use. Um, <laughs> Williams had this sort of you know, unusual system where uh, they actually mounted the, uh, the leaf switches directly to the, uh, the control panel uh, with these uh, short um, leaf switch buttons. So you, rather than having like a, a holder for the leaf switches, you have these uh, spacers, which I got these from Brad Riddell. These might be 3D printed, which is kind of neat. Uh, and I've got the... Uh, 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 keying pins uh, uh, for polarity with the uh, the Molex connector. So yeah, uh, and I've got this uh, uh, drawing from the schematic that shows how normal uh, joystick or a normal control panel for a Joust with you know mechanical leaf switch joysticks are set up. So uh, yeah, let me go and, and try to put this all together uh, and figure out how to sort of modify this wiring, and then I'll come back and uh, show you what I've been able to do. All right, here we are with a fully wired, for the most part anyway, uh, control panel. So let's take a look at what we did. Um, so I had to modify, like I said, the, uh, the repro uh, harness from Golden Age Arcade Parts to kind of accommodate uh, the optical sticks. So that meant adding a seven uh, pin Molex connector on, on both sides for both of the optical joysticks. So I took the wiring for left and right and ground and uh, added them to the uh, the connectors here. Had to separate the wires a little bit to run uh, the wire over for the flat button on either side, uh, but that was pretty good. I added uh, this gray wire for the, I, I still need to zip tie this together to clean it up, uh, for the this gray wire runs the five volts uh, from the connector to each of the uh, optical joysticks to run the opto sensors. Um, what else did I do? Oh, uh, with that gray wire. So I was working on this last night. I realized that I didn't have any uh, uh, Molex 0.62 male pins. And I'm like, oh crap, what am I gonna do? Uh, <laughs> I guess I really wanted to get this done. Uh, I actually was able to uh, order them off of Amazon, uh, a set of them, and they were delivered less than 12 hours later. So awesome. So that's all done. All of that just to get that one pin uh, that I needed, but that's good to go now. Uh, let's see, uh, I soldered in the four new uh, leaf switches for the flat buttons and the start buttons. Uh, that went pretty well. Um, uh, so all these uh, uh, leaf switches are uh, mounted on Brad Radell's uh, risers. Um, I didn't actually have the right screws and I couldn't find them at Ace Hardware, so I cannibalized them off of my Robotron out in the basement or down in the basement, but uh, Robotron's only got two buttons for player one and player two start So I only had four screws available. So each of these leaf switches is only mounted for now uh, with a single screw um, uh, Three of the buttons needed to have the holes redrilled, which was fine I had the original holes for the player two start button or the, the two player start button uh, Except I guess these leaf switches aren't as long as the original ones were so it's it's not quite where I want it to be But uh, we'll fix that once I get the 
the screws that I ordered. And uh, yeah, I had to bend the leaf switches, which is a bit of an art uh, unto itself to get them sort of bent into the right position for optimal uh, engagement. Uh, what else did I do? So I don't yet have the uh, light bulb uh, holders uh, to illuminate the um, the translucent start buttons. So I've just taped off uh, the, the wires for the lights for now. I think this control panel is uh, ready to be tested out. Uh, the next thing that I want to do is rewire this coin door. So the coin door, I've taken it off. It's in you know, reasonably good shape. I think it's actually in better shape than the, the one on my Robotron. Needs to be cleaned up a bit. There's a little bit of rust and a little bit, bit of bend here. Looks like somebody might have tried to pry this open, but yeah, I don't know if I even need to really, uh, maybe I should repaint this, who knows. Um, but the wiring is all gone. So this had been mostly stripped off. I ripped uh, 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 some of it off uh, myself. There's a little bit of remnants left. Uh, fortunately, most of these, uh, the connections that you have to make, there's aren't really that many. It seems like a lot if you look at the harness, but it's really not that many. Uh, uh, these connections are mostly uh, lugs for the most part. And we've got these quick connects on the, uh, the repro harness. So it's mostly plug and play, right? For the, the two coin mechs with the, uh, the coin uh, counter, the coin switches, uh, we've got to uh, wire up the, uh, the lockouts and the slam switch. Um, so the slam switch is the thing where if the, the game detects that you're banging on it too hard, uh, it triggers that and resets the game um, to prevent you from being able to get free credits by just you know, banging it hard enough to engage the, uh, the coin switches. Uh, these lockout coils, so these are kind of interesting. These are meant to prevent people from dropping coins in the machine when it's turned off, right? So if a kid takes a quarter and walks up to a machine and drops it in while it's off, uh, without these lockout coils, uh, the coin would pass through the coin acceptor, trigger the switch and drop into the bucket, but the game's not on, so it's not, you know, it's not crediting up the game. So these lockout switches kind of prevented people from uh, losing their money if they, they dropped it into a game when it's not powered on. However, they've been bent out of the way, so I guess uh, the people who own this game before either had problems with these lockout coils or uh, didn't want them and wanted that money. I know, I think some jurisdictions required you to have these lockout coils. Um, so that people couldn't basically be making uh, donations to the arcade operator. So I'm gonna have to bend these back into place, which is fine. Uh, Coin mechs look okay, it's sort of like there's the, the classic kind of plastic one over here, even though I think it says, uh, maybe it's good for tokens and, and quarters. I've got a metal one over here from, uh, oh, who was it made by? Uh, National Rejectors. Um, I don't think I have any of these metal ones, but that should be fine too. Uh, they look pretty good, they might need a little bit of cleaning. But um, yeah, and this is the, uh, I forget who makes the plastic one, but that's the one I'm very familiar seeing. So the, the other issue that we've got uh, is we're missing uh, the service switches. So Williams Games of this era had these sort of three switches, uh, very similar to what you would find inside of a, a pinball machine. Make makes sense because you know Williams was originally a, a pinball, and I think for longer was a pinball manufacturer. Um, you know, switches to sort of, you know, control the settings, advance it, you know, reset it, that sort of thing. And that was removed uh, by a previous owner. So I got this reproduction uh, switch panel. Uh, this was actually made by Bob Perkins. He goes by Lilypad19 on the Claw forums. Thank you, Bob, for uh, making this and selling this to me. Uh, Bob's also got a website called Lakeside Arcade. I'll put a link to it uh, in the video description. Um, he does a lot of restorations and has logs of his work on that website, sort of as a blog. He also does PCB repairs as a service. Uh, I know he specializes in, whoa, in uh, Atari Vector PCBs and, and several other games too. So if you need, uh, if you've got a broken PCB, maybe Bob can help, help you out with that. And of course, we've got the, uh, the coin door section of the repro harness from Golden Age Arcade Parts. So basically, um, like I said, everything on this harness is plug and play for the most part, except for the wires that go to the uh, service switches. So I'm gonna have to uh, wire that up, uh, solder those wires in. But uh, so yeah, let me go and uh, put all this together and then I'll come back and uh, show you the progress that I've made. Okay, I finished wiring up the coin door and uh, I think we're all set. So uh, yeah, everything plugged in uh, for the most part. Uh, I was able to solder in uh, Bob's uh, repro uh, switch panel or uh, service switch uh, uh, panel 
So that was great. Um, a couple things I kind of ran into though, the, the length of the segment of the harness for the, uh, the coin switches right here and right here is a little bit short. So originally I think the harness would kind of come down, lay flat against the inside of the door and, and fit through these sort of cable ties here. And there's just not enough length on the, uh, the wires uh, for the coin switches to allow it to do that. And so if you see, it's kind of just floating here, which I guess is fine, but um, you know, just wanted to make note of that. Uh, Ken from Golden Age includes these labels on everything, so you kind of know where things go. Uh, and you know, a lot of these, um, like the 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 color of the wire insulation, isn't exactly the same uh, as the original. So, like, you know, green is generally ground, um, but there's you know different grounds that go to different places. And you know, originally, um, you know, on the Williams uh, harness, if that'll focus would have like green with a brown stripe or, or green with a, a gray stripe or a blue stripe or whatever. Um, and instead of doing that, uh, Golden Age has like a little piece of, um, I think this is like heat shrink tubing. Like see here, this should be like yellow with a white stripe. So instead it's yellow with a little piece of white uh, heat shrink tubing, which is fine. And then the, the labels kind of help uh, with that. So yeah, I think if, uh, yeah, uh, maybe if I was going to do this in the future, I'd ask to maybe double the length of the the portion for the the coin door or the coin switches, and then I think the whole thing would be able to come down and uh, lay flat uh, inside those uh, cable holders, cable ties. So I think uh, we're good to go here. Oh, one other thing that I had to do, if I can get the the camera to sort of show this, I had to add a little jumper wire uh, to add a ground uh, tie for the middle button. Uh, just because that's how it is on my on my uh, uh, Robotron, and uh, if that wasn't there, there wouldn't be sort of anything that close the circuit on the um, the manual. Uh, you know, um, what's that? The uh, auto up and manual down uh, black button there. But I think we're uh, we're good to go there. The last thing that I want to do before we come on before we uh, test this thing one more time is uh, figure out the uh, <laughs> speaker situation. So uh, I don't think I've shown this before, but uh, our speaker is blown out. So this is the speaker grill on the underside of the, the top of the, uh, the cabinet, the joust cabinet here. And uh, these speaker grills are notorious for getting smashed up. They were just like a really, really thin, brittle plastic. Maybe it wasn't brittle originally, but after 40 years, you know, so these things are always smashed. I do have a reproduction one that I got from, oh, I'm forgetting the guy's name. I'll, I'll, Professor Pac-Man will remind us here. He does a great job uh, uh, manufacturing these or reproducing these. Man, I'm sorry, I'm forgetting your name off the, the top of my head. I wasn't planning to talk about this. But not only is the, the speaker grill smashed, somebody punched all the way through uh, the membrane of the speaker. And uh, apologies to any of you audio, audiophiles out there. I am definitely not a, uh, a speaker guru. So need to get a, re, uh, a replacement speaker. And if you look up here, it says four ohm, three watt. Uh, I originally thought that was saying four ohm, eight watt. So that's what I was looking for, which I couldn't find. So the speaker I got will fit, but it's uh, not gonna be exactly the same. So we'll see, I can always get a different one. Uh, yeah, originally I thought that said four ohm, eight watt. And the one I was able to find, the closest one I could find was a six inch speaker like this, round speaker, four ohm, but 30 watt. So again, I'm not really a audiophile speaker guy, so I don't know what that's going to mean, if that's gonna be uh, you know, different sort of uh, range of volume control or, or whatnot. Um, but we're not gonna use the speaker because it's, it's blown up. Um, I do want to reuse uh, the wire here, uh, this sort of plug. Um, and I'm just gonna come in here and cut. And before I do, I wanna sort of remember how this is uh, plugged in. So the, uh, the lug closest to, to me right here is the negative, if we can kind of get here in here and see that. And then the one farthest away is marked as positive. So think positive is black and negative is red, which, you know, usually I, you would think that the black would be common and the red would be hot. But anyway, so uh, we'll just cut these for now. And we will we'll steal this wiring and bring it over here. And uh, we'll get set up to solder this on, get to the tripod, all right, and then 
Come on down and take a look at this. So here's our new speaker. I got this from uh, Marco Specialties, Marco Pinball. And a lot, of, a lot of things, you know, there's a lot of common parts between uh, pinball machines and, and arcade video games. Um, so, uh, uh, you know, if you can't find what you're looking for from a arcade part retailer, often, you know, check out the pinball guys. They might have what you need. So we'll just come in and strip this and this. And this is a, uh, I believe it's a four ohm. It is four ohm. It's uh, definitely four ohms. It's uh, a six inch round speaker, which fits the form factor. And, uh, but I believe it's a 30 watt speaker. So again, I'm not entirely sure what that's going to do for us. If that's really gonna change things, change the, uh, the way it sounds. and. Again, if it sounds like I don't know what I'm talking about, that is 1 million percent true. Okay. So I'm just going to put some little loops into this so we can hook them on. Just like that. And then you see what I'm doing, kind of? Like this. And now, uh, remember, for whatever reason, red went to negative. So I'm gonna hook this on like so, because there's a little eyelet here. And we'll squeeze this on. I know this isn't necessarily the best thing for if you ever need to get it off. It can be a pain in the butt the way I'm putting it on. Like tricky to, uh, to get it off, but um, that's just the way I like to do it. Okay. And the black on the positive side. Okay. And uh, I think that's good. So we should just be able to come right in here with our soldering iron. And uh, Solder these wires on. All right. Weird angle here. All right, how does that look? I kind of want a little bit on the back of uh, the negative wire. All right, that should be good. Okay, that looks good. All right, and we've got our connector that we can plug into the harness. So uh, yeah, let me go put this all together and we'll be ready to do another test. Okay, we are all wired up and ready for a test. Uh, one more thing was uh, I plugged in Brad Raydell's reproduction uh, volume control knob. Uh, so it's this right here. It's got a, a 3D printed bracket, uh, volume control knob, uh, potentiometer, and then uh, plugs in uh, to the soundboard over there. So we'll be able to control the volume. And uh, yeah, I've got the speaker plugged in and grounded. I've got the control panel control panel plugged in and grounded. I've got the coin door plugged in and grounded over here. The uh, coin door uh, connector was a bit of a, a tight squeeze. I think one of the pins is trying to push out, but we'll keep an eye on that. And I tested it with the multimeter and I think it's fine. Uh, like, I, like I did before, I sort of uh, replaced um, the uh, temporarily uh, the grounding strap with these alligator clips sort of running all over uh, down here on the uh, coin door right here on the control panel, uh, back there on the speaker. And again, I'm still not sure what these, oh yeah, maybe these are the advanced switch in the um, um, coin vault, the coin, coin box, uh, I don't know. Uh, monitors plugged back in, signal on the power and the ground. Um, yeah, and I think we're good to go. One thing that I didn't uh, mention in the previous video, uh, you know, I only showed you um, when I turned it on that one time and I got uh, RAM error 
uh, 14, right? Um, I actually turned it off and back on nine more times off camera and uh, got different results. So let's see how we're gonna keep an eye on this. Uh, the second time I turned it on, I got Ram Air 33. And then, uh, then I got, what did I get? Uh, so Ram Air 14, Ram Air 33, and then the next eight times in a row, I got no errors at all. I got a zero on the uh, ROM board, little uh, LED uh, uh, light. And um, yeah, so uh, I was talking to Sean from the uh, Classic Arcade Repairs YouTube channel. Uh, he was commenting on my video. He thinks that this is a a timing issue with the timing specs on the RAM. There is a bit of a, a mismatch of uh, 4116 RAM on the board. I do see a couple that have 15 uh, markings indicating a 1500 uh, nanosecond refresh rate. So I might have to uh, take a look at swapping some RAM out. But uh, here's a moment of truth. Um, <laughs> let me turn off this light here. And uh, you keep an eye on, a, on the screen. I'll keep an eye on the... Uh, the ROM board, and we'll see what we get. Three, two, one. Whoop. Okay. Um, I blew a fuse. Oh man. Uh oh. This is not not what I was expecting. <sighs> I blew a fuse on the twelve volt line. Uh, I saw it. I think it's this one right here, lit up nice and red. I did notice immediately that this LED did not turn on. Man. Um, let me think about that and uh, figure something out and we'll come back and maybe test it again. All right, I looked into it a little bit and I'm pretty sure that it is an issue with the coin door. Uh, um, I uh, compared uh, this coin door and the way it's wired with the coin door on my Robotron. I noticed a couple things different. Uh, most importantly, the, uh, the wires for the lockout coils, I maybe had backwards. So the, the live and ground were backwards. Uh, so now I've got it so that it matches uh, what's in the Robotron. And uh, I might have actually had one of the, the wires of the lockout coils uh, disconnected uh, because I was double checking the, the ground connection through the wiring harness. Um, I also noticed that uh, both of the 44 um, uh, uh, bulbs for the, uh, the coin reject lights were out, so I replaced those. Uh, I noticed a couple of other wires were a little bit different, so I've got everything matching now with the, the coin switches and the, <coughs> excuse me, the slam switch. So I think we're good to go there, but I do have it completely disconnected for now just to isolate it to confirm that it is the coin door that has the issue to confirm that hypothesis. I put a new uh, four amp slow blow f uh, fuse in at F3, uh, which is the one that we blew. And uh, I think we're ready to do another test. And again, we won't have the coin door, so we're not gonna be able to coin it up or anything, uh, but we can at least confirm that that's uh, the part of the system that was uh, not working. So with that, um, <laughs> I think we're ready to power it up. Three, two, one. All right, we've got three lights on the power supply board. We don't have a fuse blown. We've got zero, a code zero on the ROM board uh, LED segmented uh, uh, display, so that's good. And what does it say here on the screen? It says high score table reset. Bookie, bookkeeping totals cleared, factory settings restored. How's that coming through on the screen? Um, why don't I? <laughs> Again, there's a, it's a little red. So we're gonna have to adjust uh, the colors, which is normal. So, um, you know, uh, I, can I hit? No, these buttons don't do anything. I should, um, typically I think you would hit the, the switch there on the, uh, the advanced switch on the, uh, the service switch panel, but that's not connected. So I think, and maybe it was Sean, uh, somebody told me in a comment that I can hit the reset switch on the MPU and get past that screen. So here we are in the rug pattern. 
Um, the sort of refresh thing that you're, the bars that you're seeing are uh, only on the camera. So all systems go, wow! Look at that! Awesome! We've got Joust running on this monitor. I can't play it because it says zero credits. I don't think there's a way to coin it up without using the coin door. But look at that. We've got Joust running on this monitor. Isn't that incredible? <laughs> Man, it looks great too. Let me turn the lights off and see if it's still a little red or not. Yeah, it looks a little red. Um, and those uh, sort of uh, uh, random you know, dots and stuff at the top of the screen, that's normal. That's on all Williams games of this era the Robotron has. You can kind of adjust the screen to take that off, but uh, it's doing some sort of math. That looks really good though. Other than the, maybe I can do this real quick. Let me just, let's see if I can do it over here. If I can adjust, and we got, you know, no errors. So maybe the RAM has knocked its uh, rust off, figuratively, I mean. Um, maybe I can turn the red drive down just a tad. Oh, where am I here? Uh, I don't really want to just randomly mess with stuff. That's blue. RGB. How's that? How's that look? Do we have much green? Maybe I can adjust the, uh... oh, there's green. Okay, yeah, we got green. Maybe I can adjust the vertical position. Let's see if I can remember where that is. Oh, uh, vertical hold, vertical dampener. Maybe vertical size is the right thing to do here. How does that look? I'll mess with this later, but uh, I think we're in pretty good shape. So uh, let's do this. Okay. Um, I don't want to keep blowing fuses, but I want to play this game. Um, and I, I don't think I can even put it on free play without the coin door sort of service switches. So let's do this. The game is off. <sighs> let's, um, let's reconnect the control panel harness. Cross our fingers that we've fixed the problem. And this is a tight squeeze, but ah, I think that's on. And uh, reconnect our temporary ground. Temporary grounding strap with these alligator clips. All right. You watching this? Come on, please don't blow a fuse again. Three, two, one. Okay, no fuse is blown. Holy moly. What was that? Something's not right. Let's see. Coin door lights are on. We got a zero on the ROM board. What the heck? There's like a U. Oh, something's still not right with this coin door. Uh, we're not blowing fuses, which is good. Do I have this? Let me try just disconnecting these lockout coils. Something's telling me that's like our issue. Ah, come on. Yeah, I've never seen like the, we're losing the screen and 
we get a, I don't know, did you see that? No, you couldn't see it. There's a, it's like a, just a U shape and it's just the top, it's almost like the zero got shifted up on the segmented display. All right, coin door lights on. Three lights on the power supply, zero on the ROM board. Something's messed up. It's not those lockout coils. All right, those are back on. Did I wire up the uh, service switches wrong? And like, what would cause it to reset like that? Let me disconnect the uh, <sighs> coin door again. Ground is disconnected. <sighs> Harness is disconnected. Zero on the ROM board. See, it's not doing that thing now. What is going on? Oh, I really want to play a game of Joust. <laughs> I really want to play a game of Joust. We're so close. All right, let me uh, look into this and see what's going on. Okay, let's <laughs> let's try this one more time. <sighs> so I I, uh, I had some wiring messed up with the service switches. I don't know how I did it. I took a, a picture of the one of my Robotron. And I was trying to copy it exactly, but I got it wrong. Uh, so I fixed that, got that sorted out. Um, everything's plugged back in. Um, all of the connectors are plugged back in on the, um, on the coin door. Uh, the ground is reconnected. The control panel harness, or uh, excuse me, the coin door harness is reconnected. <sighs> I hope this works. Okay, so um, three, two, one. All right, fuses are not blown. Three lights on the power supply. Coin door lights are on, zero on the ROM board. Okay, we're on the high score table reset. Okay. It hasn't reset on its own. That's good. What happens if I press one of these uh, service switch buttons? Okay, did I fix it? Let's try coining up. Okay. <laughs> oh my goodness. All right, let's uh, try starting a game. Oh my gosh, it's loud. Let me turn this down a little bit. All right, that's plenty loud. All right, am I getting my butt kicked? Flap, uh-oh, okay. Um, something's wrong, can you see this? So I'm hitting the flap button and I'm going left. And then I, that doesn't seem right. All right, what about the joystick? Pushing left makes me go right, okay. Pushing right makes me flap. So we got an issue with the player one uh, controls. Yeah, flap makes it go, flap goes left. Left goes right and right flaps. Oh, that's a. Okay, well, <laughs> I don't think that's me. I don't think I did that wrong. Yeah, the, let's look at this. Let me see if you can see this. Let's even lay down like this. So uh, that wire labeled flap 
is connected to the flat button, which makes it go left. And like, keep going left. I, 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 <laughs> um, yeah, okay. Let's see what the player two controls look like. All right, let's see. Let's coin it back up. All right, we've got two credits in. Let's see if the player two start button works. Okay, we've started a two player game. Let's see what the, these controls do. All right, so flap works. Player two flap works. But right and left are swapped. There you go. Okay. So. All right, so uh, how do I fix that? Um, so player two should be easy enough. I can, I can swap left and right on the connector here, um, on the, the Molex connector, on the, the optical joystick, but for, but for player one, I don't know if I need to change this. Maybe I can change this at the control panel connector. All right, let me, let me, uh, let me figure something out here. All right, let's try this one last time. I think I got it all sorted out now. I actually screwed it up a, a few times. I was confusing myself. I think I got it. So <laughs> let's test it. And hopefully we got the controls right. Three, two, one. Three lights on the power supply board. Coin door lights are on. We've got zero on the ROM board. That's, that's actually going really great. Um, other than the first two times I turned it on, we've got no ROM or RAM errors. Uh, high score table reset. Let's hit the advance button. Here we go. Coin it up. <laughs> Start a two player game. Oh my goodness. All right, let's see. Can I flap? Oh my gosh. Flap works, let's go left. Oh my gosh, we're going left, let's go right. We're going right. How about the player two? Flap, flap, flap. Go left, go right, whoops. Player two, go right. I think we've got working controls. Oh my lord. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. How's that look? Not too bad. We got a lot. Some, we got some glare from the coin lights, but uh, look at that. That looks like joust. Golly. All right. There's actually. Oh, you know what? There's one more thing I want to do. One more thing I want to do. Let me turn these lights back on. Let's see. Yeah, you know, and and I don't know really what the problem was, right? I don't think I wired stuff wrong originally. Um, you know, so maybe, I don't wanna say that the harness was wrong, but maybe there's, uh, maybe there's a difference between, I don't know, the, for the optical uh, stuff, I, I, I don't know. The last thing I wanna do is um, uh, make it so that we're not losing the settings every time. And to do that, um, I think I mentioned this before, Joust and Robotron and Stargate and I think Defender, et cetera, uh, used uh, just AA batteries to keep a, I believe, CMOS uh, chip uh, powered up even when the game was turned off uh, to save the high scores, to save settings, uh, that sort of thing. So, you know, what I'd like to do and what I did in my... Um, in my Robotron was install a, uh, an NV RAM chip, which sort of has a battery inside of it, lasts for, you know, a decade or longer. 
and that's a sort of good long-term, you know, sort of permanent solution. Uh, you know, there's other options like uh, putting a, a, a coin cell, like a, um, a watch battery mod you can do or um, with a lithium battery or uh, like I've seen some people use like um, cordless phone batteries. But what I actually saw, you know, Brad Raydell uh, said that what he does is he just uses, you know, Energizer lithium uh, batteries. I just opened this pack. Um, so what I did was I cleaned up the original just a little bit. I don't know, this might actually be acid damage, but I'm not going to touch it because it's working. And so let's come in and pop some fresh, man, uh, <laughs> easier said than done, pop some fresh batteries in here. Oh my gosh. Okay, that's one. I kind of tried to snug these up and I think on the process I really got to I don't want to bust the board. Oh my gosh, these are really snug. Really snug. Oh, there we go. Two. Okay, let's get this last one in. And so with this, with these batteries installed, if I can do it without breaking something, holy moly. Um, we should get our settings saved. And uh, man, you see that? Okay. So I think those are good. Um, hopefully I didn't flex the board to the point where cracked a solder joint or something. So let's come back over here. We'll still get the, um, the same sort of initial kind of uh, warning, um, you know, because it's been reset. But if we set, if we, uh, there we go. If we get our settings right now and we can try a couple things to t uh, test it. Um, we should be able to uh, uh, have that as our solution for now. So, um, hopefully the game comes up. Zero on the ROM board, here we go. It's reset, okay. Uh, we do this and then do it here, all right. Bookkeeping is completely all zeros. That's what we expect. Let's go to the next one. Um, oops. How do we do this? Oh, right. Advanced to exit. Okay. Okay. All right. 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 I want to get back to my this screen. Okay. Uh, extra man. That's fine. High score to date allowed. Pricing selection. We change this to free play. All right. Uh, difficulty five. Press advance to exit. All right, so we're on free play. Okay, that at least the setting took there. Let's try to put a high score in and put our initials in and then power cycle the game. All right, and I turned down the uh, volume again, just so hopefully you can hear me over <laughs> the sound of the game, and hopefully you can see kind of what's going on. Whoops. All right. Ooh, almost. I am not the world's best uh, jazz player. I think that honor goes to uh, Lonnie. And Lonnie, thanks for all your help. But guys, uh, maybe I just realized this myself, we've got a working joust. All the boards are working. We haven't had any issues since those first couple of uh, ram, oops, since those first few ram errors. Um, Everything's working, the sound's working, controls are working now at least. 
coin door is working. I mean, I, I haven't tested like the slam switch or, uh, I mean, you know, coin mechs I haven't tested. It's that little red dot right here. I don't know if that's a, a RAM thing. All right, let's, oh no. All right, I guess I have one life left. There's that pterodactyl. But I think these are the early ROMs where... Whoop, I guess... Uh... <laughs> okay, we got a high score, let's go. C, F, G is me. And uh, where are we? Number 34, terrible, terrible, terrible. All right, so that's been saved. Let's turn the game off. Let's leave it off for a little bit. But yeah, let's reflect on this. <laughs> We've got a working joust. Controls work, boards work, power, sound, uh, speaker work works, our new speaker works. Um, coin door works, monitor works, picture looks great actually. <sighs> We've still got some work to do on this uh, cabinet over here. Um, you know, I don't think I'm really going to spend too much time on it. There's uh, you know, a hole I want to, that was, there was a credit switch there. I do want to uh, fix that and then maybe give a, give a quick uh, coat of black paint on the front, although it's not that bad. I don't know if I really want to do a ton of touching up here. Uh, I'll take a look at what's going on in the bottom, and if it really needs some work, we'll do it. I don't want to do too much. Um, uh, Winslow is the guy's name who makes the reproduction uh, speaker grills. Winslow, sorry, I couldn't remember your name before, buddy. Uh, in the next video, I think one of the things we'll do, we'll work on the cabinet, I think, next, because uh, I really want, we're all, almost done. Uh, we need to fix the marquee light. Uh, it's been sort of hacked in with a regular... Uh, uh, bulb. We'll fix it. I've got a new ballast. I, I think I've got everything I need to fix the uh, the marquee light. We'll put the speaker in here. We'll put the new Winslow's reproduction speaker grill on. We'll clean the thing up. We'll, uh, you know, fix that uh, hole in the front, do whatever we decide to do on the sides. I really don't want to do too much, like I said. But uh, yeah, we're so close. So close. Maybe only, maybe two more episodes to really get done. And well, we've got all the guts good to go. So let's do one last test here. And all we're really looking for is that the free play setting is still on. We're, we're not gonna get that sort of warning, um, you know, bookkeeping, everything reset. Um, this is gonna tell us if the CMOS is working and if the, the power is being sent uh, to the, uh, from the batteries. So let's see. It works. <laughs> and here we are, look, number 34, CFG, right there. Can you see that? Can you see that right there? 34, CFG, and uh, it should be on free play. We won't leave it on free play when it gets to the basement. I do like quarter play in the basement, but uh, let's start a game real quick. Yeah, look at that. Flap works, left works, right works. Joust. We've got a joust. All right, and pretty soon this entire project will be done. So I think this video is long enough. I really don't know. <laughs> it's only one o'clock in the morning. Anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, all the feedback is awesome. People uh, helping out in the comments, leaving helpful suggestions. That's just amazing. Thanks for all the likes, the shares, the, the, the subscriptions, unbelievable support. You know, one question I get all the time is people will say, hey, uh, where'd you get that tool from? Where'd you get that part from? Down in the video description of every video that I do, I have links to everything that I use, all the tools, all the parts. Uh, and if there's some like uh, a manual or some you know, information sheet that I looked up, uh, I, I leave a link to that too. So there's always links to that stuff to either Amazon or eBay or whatever. Yes, there are affiliate links. I haven't made any money off of it yet, but if it, if it can be helpful for you all, uh, if you're trying to do something similar, you know, if you want to get the same, you know, ratcheting crimping tool, or where did you get the, uh, um, you know, uh, 
the, the pins, those Molex pins, whatever, you can always find that down in the, uh, the video description. So again, I'll cut it off here. Thanks so much. Uh, <laughs> thanks for watching Overtime Arcade. I'm Charlie, and I'll see you next time. Oh, 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 overtime!